Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about styling tables. And um, I want to give you just some general styles, but I re really would like to focus on the nth child selector and how you can use it to target specific cells. Allow us to target rows or columns and some of the stylistic choices we can do. A couple things I uh, just want to go over. If you can see here, I've labeled all the rows and columns of this table. And I just want to make sure if you can see there are seven rows and there are four columns. And I haven't merged anything. When you merge, the nth child selector can get a little more complicated. Um, and so maybe if there's time, I'll show you how you can target uh, that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is let's take a look at the table. We're going to add some styles. And uh, I put a border of one here in the table. That was just so I could see the table at the time. At this point, I don't need to do that anymore because I'm going to do that with CSS. And so we're just going to go ahead and create a style tag in the head. I always add the type attribute for my style tags. I just like to do that. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and target the table. Uh, we're going to put a border around the whole table. I just give it black, just for now. Keep it simple. We go back to our page, hit refresh. There it is. Notice when you give a border around the table, it goes around the entire table. So in order to get borders around the cells or around the rows, um, and I don't even think you can do a lot with the rows, but I know you can do it with the cells. Um, let's go ahead and do it with the, we'll try I'll just show you what happens with the rows just so you can see. Every now and then, I always wonder, have things changed? And I'm going to change the table around the border to be, I don't know, four pixels. See if a table row border does any good. And if you notice, it doesn't. So trial and error, there's nothing wrong with that. So at least we learned something new. So we change it to TD, save our changes, hit refresh, and now you got cells around the table. First thing I want to point out, Whenever you do tables, I think it is essential, whether you are doing borders or you are not doing borders, I think it's essential to add padding. Always, always, always add padding to your TDs. Now notice, in my header up here, there are no borders. That's because these are THs, not TDs. And so we'll, we'll decide what to do in just a moment. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and just target both TDs and THs. So we'll put TH comma TD. So if you want to apply the same styles to two different tags, we group them using commas. And I use the space just so it's a little more readable. Now you can see you got borders around the table headers as well as the table cells. Let's add our padding. We're going to use shorthand. We're going to give it two values. When you use shorthand and you don't specify top, bottom, right, or left, the first value is for top and bottom, second one is for left and right. I always prefer to use the EM for this. Now, I don't know if I've gone over EM with you or not, but an EM just is the height of the letter M or the width of the M. I don't recall, but it's the biggest letter. And so it becomes kind of a relative size, and it's based on the size of your text. So it's kind of a nice, uh, easy one. Usually, I usually use it like uh, padding like this. This is a very typical padding style for me. Let's re refresh. You see how it's all spaced out more? I'm going to move this over a little bit and move this over more. That padding is a little bit too much, so I'm going to scale this back. I don't think I need that much padding. And, it, you know, it's trial and error. You can mess around. That's pretty good. We just don't want to have our text touching those borders. Okay? So at this point now, we've targeted it. Um, there's one thing that always annoys me about tables, and that is that little gap in between all the borders. And there is a thing you can apply to the table. It's called border collapse. Border collapse. You tell it to collapse. Save your changes, hit refresh, bam, those are gone. Now we can work with this and we can do a lot of styling. 
Okay, this is always kind of like the first thing I like to do at tables. It's a very common way of me styling tables. It doesn't hurt. Maybe your table row that, that has all the headers at the top, maybe you want to style that a little different. So in this case, we're going to style just the TH. And one of the things I like to do sometimes is just reverse colors. So right now, the background color is white, foreground color is black. And uh, I'm going to do one little thing too. For added bonus, I'm going to add some style to the body. And I'm a firm believer that it's not the best to have too sharp of a contrast. I don't like pure white and pure black, so this is a very common thing I also do. I'm going to set a background color of almost white. So we'll do like F, oh wait, we've got to do hashtag. F0, 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 like so color. Now if it were all zeros, then that would be black. So I'm going to do 10, 10, 10. Technically that's not 10. This is hexadecimal. That's actually 16, 16, 16. And you see that? I don't know if you can see the difference, but it's a little bit more muted. It's not quite so sharp. Um, I like that. It kind of gives it a sort of a matte look to it. Matte spelled M-A-T-T-E. All right, so let's do our TH. Let's reverse our colors. I'm just going to copy the background color and color from body. I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm just going to take this background dash and move it in front of where it says color. So now I've just swapped the two colors. Save my changes, hit refresh, bam, there we go. So uh, if, you don't, if you're not told how to style a table, might I recommend you do something like that. On your header, just reverse the colors. Can't go wrong reversing the colors. If they were a good contrast before and you reverse them, it'll still be a good contrast. All right, now comes the fun. The real fun is, is the how do we target like one particular row or alternating rows? How do we do that? I'm going to pick some colors and I'll be right back. Okay, we're gonna do uh, one other thing here. On our table, we're gonna set the color of our text on here. Is that the one I wanted? Yeah. So I changed the color a little bit. You probably can't even see the difference there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this selector. It's a pseudo selector. So it's kind of like a kind of selector. It's a fake selector. Don't know why they call it that, all right? It's called the nth child, okay? And let's think of it this way. Table is a parent. This table gave birth to seven rows, all right? Yeah, I know. It's it. Anyway, each row gave birth to four cells, right? Four THs or four TDs. So the TDs are children of the table row. The table rows are children of the table. And the table is a child of the body. It's just a way of referring to it, okay? So when we talk about an nth child, we're saying, which child are we referring to? So if we say a table row, and we say, which child that is, is that the firstborn table row, the secondborn table row? Is it all the odd children? Are you an odd child? Yeah. I know I'm one of them. I'm the last one of five. So that probably explains a lot. All right, but the point is, that's what we're doing. It's children, right? So this is what it looks like. We're going to do table row, and we're going to put a colon. This is for pseudo selector. And we're going to write nth dash child parentheses. Okay, so what if we want to get all of those odd children? Odd. Okay, all of the odd table rows, and we're going to give a background color, and we're just going to do background color. We're going to do B, D, E, 3, E, F. Save our changes. Hit refresh. Save. Bam. There we go. Now, why did the odd child not target the very first table row? The reason why it didn't 
is because we already targeted the TH with the background color. So in the case of tables, it looks like a row um, does not take precedent over a, an individual cell. But right there, by doing nth child odd, every other alternating row now gets this background color. And we can do the same thing for even. Save our changes. Bam! We just flipped them. Okay? All right, so odd, even. What if we want to target only the third row? Just type three. Save. Refresh. Third row. See that? Row three. Matches up. Nth child three. Ah, pretty cool, huh? And we can do this, of course, for our TDs. So what if I change this to TD? Nth child three. Save. Ah, column three. Because that is our third TD. And, of course, we can do one. That lets us target this first one. This is great if you have, like, headers along the side, you know, that, that run along the side uh, that to sort of highlight that. And, of course, you can style doing other things. So now we can do this where uh, this gets lots of fun. We can alternate, you know, rows and columns and things like that by mixing and matching them. Are you getting how this works? So I can leave you. So basically, the keywords are odd or even, or you can give a number, and the number will just target that specific one. You can also target, like, let's say I only want the first, um, I'm sorry, only want row two, column one. This is what I would do. TR and child. And I'll put two, because that's the second row. And I'm going to put a space. No, I'm not going to do a space. No, I am going to do a space. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, I'm very uh, non-committal today. Uh, all right, so what we're saying here is uh, using a space, this is called, I like to call it a contextual selector. It's all about context. So what we're saying is, uh, first of all, look for the second table row. And in it, there's going to be a TD with an nth child of odd. Let's just put one now. So we're saying the first TD in the second row. Bam. Did it. Second cell in that row. Bam. All right, see how that works? Let's try something else. Let's try our odd rows even children. Okay. And let's give a background color of 10, 10. Well, let's, let's mix it up. Let's do like, uh, I don't know, three, zero, three, zero, three, zero color. Before I do this, I got to get a good contrasting color. Uh, well, we'll just see, we'll see what we got here. We'll try a color. We're going to try some E's in here. We're going to do an E. Um, we'll do an E0, 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 like so. Save our changes. Hit refresh. Oh, look at that. So now, you know, we can do all kinds of variations as we go through here. And then let's do one more. Actually, let's just, I'm going to copy, paste, and then change. Let's alternate those. We'll do even, and we'll do odd. Save our changes, and what are we going to get? Anyone? Hey, got almost like a checkerboard. Of course, that doesn't quite work as a checkerboard because they're not square, but there you have it. So you can do endless combinations and possibilities using the nth child, and this works for any tag. It could be paragraphs, table rows. It could be tables, every other table, all right? Um, and so there's, there's a lot of applications for this. Um, the other thing I just want to say is, uh, don't worry if you need something styled, like one thing gets one color and one another, there's all kinds of other variations. You can drop headers and other items like images and things into rows and cells. I hope this has been informative. Good luck on your future table endeavors. 
Okay, I forgot there's one last selector that goes with the nth child. I completely forgot. Sometimes you want to just do something to the very final item, um, like either add something on the last one or whatever. Uh, nth child starts at the beginning, goes forward. There's also one called nth last child. I don't know what the browser support is on this, but if you do last and child one and you save your changes on uh, Chrome, hold on. Yeah, look at that. It, there it is on the last child one. Let's do last child two. And so we're working off of the end. And we can do the same thing for table row. Works the same way. All right, final row. So this is really good if you're working at the end. This is also good like if you have a series of um, nav buttons and you want to put a little right hand border on each of these except for the final one. Um, then you could remove it on the nth last child one and you can remove it there. So there's also with the nth child is nth last child just works backwards from the end going forward in number.